Today I want to take you through my journey of creating a few small projects where I try to create different forms of artificial life for my own entertainment. And it all started with Particle Life. Particle Life is the most simple yet beautiful of all my projects. It shows how simple rules can lead to complex systems. The idea is that we simulate a bunch of particles with a position and a velocity property. And then we create a matrix to show how they push and pull on each other. For example, in this matrix, red is attracted to itself, but it doesn't like green very much. And the force graph for the simulation looks something like this. The particles push each other away when they're too close, that way they don't clump up. Also, since each dot needs to check the position of every other dot, I implemented something called a quad tree. It helps me check what particles are in a certain area quicker than checking every single particle. Now, at first I tried to make all the particles attracted to each other, but my code was so buggy that I couldn't even do that. It just, it just did this for some reason. After a while though, I figured it out. Fantastic. Then I had my biggest bug of the whole freaking video. For some reason, the particles just did this every time. I struggled with this for so long that my hair was falling out. Turns out, for good reason. You know what they say, the hardest bugs to fix are bugs that aren't actually bugs. Turns out my code was working exactly as intended. It's just that I was checking for a rectangular area around the particles instead of a circle. I was doing this 100% intentionally because it's way more efficient when using a quad tree. But apparently for some reason that just breaks the whole particle system's behavior. But then I fixed the bug and I started hard coding matrix values and it was working. But it wasn't very entertaining. So I decided to randomize the matrix. By the way, don't talk to me about this jitter because after two weeks of thinking, I'm convinced they can't be fixed. They're just part of the system now. What can I say? Life's unstable. Finally, it was done. It wasn't very fast or very efficient, but it was done. I messed with it for a while, made some cool patterns and made some really cool creatures actually. It did make me feel weird that I could disintegrate their whole world whenever I wanted to. I found some really cool specimens though, here's my top 3 favorite creature variants. My third favorite has to be the cell or the string world, after all there is a beauty in simplicity. My second favorite was the motor. This dude rocks, I had so much fun with this. Here's a second variation. And my favorite are the behemoths, the chungos. I love these little babies. And laugh if you must, but let me tell you, this variant can lay eggs! Look at this. One. Two. And three. That's really cool. Anyway, I made a camera follow system and I chased around a few of the behemoths. But then I was done and I was a bit bored, and I wanted to make larger forms of life. Much larger. That's how I got to procedural animation. It's a few different methods for creating realistic looking movement. So there's this thing in procedural animation called inverse kinematics. It's the algorithm robots use for moving their arms in space. Essentially you have an arm made of segments, 
you choose where the arm should go and you move the last segment to the target, and then you work your way backward through the chain. Usually you lock the base of the arm, but if you don't do that and increase segment count, you get a really weird snake. After a few bugs, I did it. I made it so the thickness changes based on length. Now it was time to make it more natural. So quick side tangent. These are voids. Basically particles simulating bird flocking. Now if you want, I can make a video or a short explaining these later. The algorithm behind them is really simple. But for now I remembered coding these because I remembered there's this handy little wander function I wrote for these birds that I could use for my snake. All I had to do was make an invisible void and make a snake that chases it around. It's kind of anticlimactic, isn't it? Well, I felt the same, except I spent the whole day on it. I actually have something to say and I'm new to editing, so give me a minute to explain while you watch this. There's a slightly different alg algorithm used in procedural animation. It's really simple, and I'm lazy, and manam animations are really hard, okay? Plus, it's not like you guys care, you're just here for the eye candy anyway. In case you want an explanation for this next one, just go see this short video by Argonaut on YouTube. So, let's move on. Here it is. Hmm, is this better? I think this is better. But you know, even if it's not, the most useful part of this algorithm is its utility. For example, because of the way it's drawn, I can do this. All I have to do is make a whole freaking vertex output system for each segment, and get a headache fixing bugs for hours, and then I can do this. A little fish. Add a dash of color and some dangly bits, and boom, a mildly entertaining bootleg ripoff of someone else's video. But hey, I can at least mush this and the boys together to create this monstrosity. Although alarm bells are going off in my head for view retention, because this is much less satisfying to watch than the particle life. But at least it's over, right? So I need to speak to you guys for a moment without you guys getting bored, so here's an eye candy edit of some of my old projects. I'm sort of new at this whole YouTube thing, as you can tell by the fact that this whole video was a mishmash of unrelated nonsense with no structure or story. But you know, I'm trying to get a handle on it. I mean, I opened an editing software two weeks ago for the first time, but I think I'm getting better and I'm finding my style. There was like 15 different things I hated about the last video I made, but I fixed most of them. And if this trend continues, I'll get better with each video. And since I'm not good at editing, I have to make these videos sort of short, even though I thought this video would be much longer. But hopefully this, that's gonna get better. And until I get better, all I plan to do is make videos that I would enjoy watching. There's a lot more things I can get into with artificial life, like ants, 3D stuff, graphical things. So if you want a part two, tell me in the comments, okay? And if you want to see me do more creative coding stuff or make AIs that play games for me, don't forget to subscribe, okay? See you guys in the next video.